What's up, Electroculture family? Today we're going to look at using an electroculture antenna with a water reservoir. So most energy tools and healing tools that we know of as things to use to heal the body um, originated as agricultural devices. And even when we're doing healing with tools and devices or in Qigong medicine, really what we're doing is we're, we're imprinting the water, we're affecting the water within the body and within the soils. So today we're going to look at using this CW2 paramagnetic electroculture antenna from the fertile current, which is going to be, which is already connected to a wire that runs to our water reservoir where we're going to make some plasma activated compost tea while generating these telluric and atmospheric currents into the reservoir and then into a negative point. So let's go into the greenhouse where the reservoir is and take a look at how it's set up. As we know, alchemy, the word comes from the reference of the dark soils that are, that are known to transmute elements. And subsequently, chemistry comes from alchemy. So there's a lot of science that's built on these transmuting properties of um, soils. And that has a lot to do with the water in the soils. Okay, let's examine the setup. This is a 17 gallon reservoir that we're making the compost tea in. We saw the CW2 antenna is connected outside of the greenhouse. The wire from that antenna runs to that southern point on that uh, tensor ring, the, out, the outer tensor ring. There's a set of three harmonious tensor rings, and the negative goes to the converse side with a head in the center. That's the negative wire running down, and you'll see that I've made a makeshift grounding rod that goes deep into the soil there with that four gauge copper, and that is connected to the wire that goes out to the uh, paramagnetic electroculture antenna outside the greenhouse. There's a tensor rod connected to the center of the hedica that goes to the frequency generator, and we're generating 1014 hertzian frequency, and that is the elemental frequency of nitrogen. You can choose many frequencies. The frequency generator is connected to the tensor ring around the Lemurian crystal, which then is connected to the tensor rod that touches the hedica. This is our paramagnetic basalt powder, and this is our vegetative waste compost. We have some organic molasses in the mix, as well as some monatomic gold. I'm going to fill up the reservoir with water from our well. There you can better see the tensor rod that touches the center of the hedica, which we know is an ancient symbol for water in many, many cultures. That is a one cubit hedica. Air stones are in the bottom of the reservoir providing aeration for our solution. And this solution will brew for many, many, many hours. Less than 24, usually more than 12. So this is a 17 gallon reservoir. And I'm going to show, we're going we're gonna to mix the four cups of compost, two tablespoons of molasses, and one cup of highly paramagnetic basalt powder into the reservoir to make the primary ingredients for our tea. We know that water is an electrical conduit, one of the best. And rivers and streams, it's known in many cultures and observable through geology that rivers and streams flow between two different types of rock where one is paramagnetic and the other diamagnetic. This would be on the lateral banks. In Chinese medicine, it's seen as the yin and yang side of the river, the shade and sun side, the diamagnetic, the paramagnetic side, the negative, the positive side. These are all the same concept represented through different language. So that would be the lateral banks of the river. My guess is that rivers and streams are also collecting uh, polar potentials in their linear flow as well. We could see high elevation as yang or positive when compared to low elevation, yin or negative. But this is, is an example of this idea. Higher elevation to lower elevation would be a current. So, the water that's between these two fluxing potentials is generating voltage. Current in electrical science is a flow of energy from positive to negative. So this again is consistent with this um, theory. Positive ion collecting antenna to the negative ground, creating energy in between. In Qigong, the water inside us is energized when we collect yang having positive energy through our byway antenna on our head and yin, earth, negative energy through the perineum 
and generate qi in our life force elixir field known as the Dan Tian. The heart mind acts as the frequency generator through intention, emotion, and vibration, and determines the subtle energetic qualities and bandwidths of our energetic selves. Generating the frequencies for the elemental nitrogen will stimulate the biological nitrogen through sympathetic resonance. With living waters, we could see the movement as a result of the current, the electrical yang to yin current manifested materially through dissimilar elevations. Just like there's currents produced, produced through dissimilar metals at different temperatures. So what is the essence of water being considered living? I'm inclined to see that as the current, the positive to negative electrical flow. And if all landlocked bodies of water eventually flow to the oceans, which would theoretically be at the lowest, most yin negative points in elevation, that would make the oceans sort of like the capacitors. And when they're full of salts and electrolytes, that would make the oceans an electrical amniotic fluid of sorts. It's no coincidence that seawater and amniotic fluid protects and bathes the womb have near identical properties, but we are, of course, small universes. Imprinting water is like sculpting with clay. Here, ambient air is brought into the plasma phase with electrical energy via the scalar plasma projector. The activated air is then brought into contact with the T. Reactive oxygen and nitrogen dissolve into the T, creating plasma-activated compost T. This is biomimicry of a thunderstorm, like lightning over a lake or stream.